So here's something that's been on my uh, to-do list for quite a while and I finally got the kick in the pants that I needed to uh, take a look at it. Uh, so what we've got here is I, I, I've got the GBHD Color from uh, Gamebox Systems. Um, I want to take a look at it. Uh, so for those that are unaware, my channel basically exists because I, I like tinkering. I'm big fan of Game Boys, of course, uh, but most of most of the hobby for me is uh, building Game Boys, uh, more so than playing them. So, consoleizers have certainly been on my list of things I want to check out, but haven't been a high priority. Anyway, things are changing because I bought this thing. So, for, for those that aren't aware, this is a Game Boy Color uh, that supports HDMI out. Uh, so one of the uh, neat thing I'm grabbing a cart to stick in there. That's not even a Game Boy cart. I don't understand how that happens, but it's it's a Game Boy console. Put your carts in. Plug a Super Nintendo controller in, which I forgot to grab one, but doesn't matter. This thing doesn't work. Um, but plug your carts in, and you can just use it like a regular Game Boy, except on the TV. What's unique about this one in particular is uh, I don't. I don't know that they actually support this specific model anymore. At least I didn't see it on their site, and the documentation was kind of uh, few and far between for this specific version. Um, but this is a half height version. So, like I said, this is a Game Boy Color. But you know, if you're if you're sitting here looking at this, going, uh huh, sure, because you know the 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 height of a normal Game Boy console. Should have had one ready, shouldn't I? Uh, might as well get the pretty one. You know, Game Boy console is uh, quite a bit, quite a bit bigger than these are normally. Uh, but I did already um, pop out the four screws here, so we can pull this apart. And uh, this is what it looks like. You've got a literal half Game Boy here. And uh, before I, I really get into this thing, um, I, I just gotta say, I, I saw Gamebox tease this specific version of this Game Boy Color, or this Game Boy Consoleizer, and I think it just, like, it triggered something, and it just, like, sat in my brain for a while. And I know I'm not the only one who had this thought, but I think it led to these things. Uh, so, I don't feel like finding batteries, but, um, plug in a DC jack here. Batteries are on the charger somewhere. Oh, I found the batteries, never mind. But anyway, this is, now it doesn't matter. What a wonderful example. Alright, fine. I know where the batteries are. So similarly, we have this, which is a Game Boy Color in a uh, Game Boy Pocket shell, uh, which is actually made in a shockingly similar manner. We just take the Game Boy board, cut the top half off, put that in the Game Boy Pocket, and then cut the bottom half of the Game Boy Pocket off and shove that in there. And you know, I, I'm guessing they're half size boards or kits didn't really work out because, like I said, I don't even see them listed anymore, but it certainly struck a chord with me and it's the one that I wanted. So when this one popped up on eBay for the price it popped up at, I couldn't help myself. Um, anyway, almost five minutes in, I haven't even talked about my specific unit. So this one I bought as, as is for parts uh, because the seller said it didn't work. Uh, now, I'm always wary of buying untested things or four parts things on eBay, but in this case I felt like it was it was worth the gamble because the seller was totally honest in that they said it worked before they took it apart, and then it never worked again. Uh, but not to mention they posted pictures and I could I could see straight from the pictures what the specific issue is. 
And uh, for those that aren't aware, that ribbon cable is not supposed to come up that much. There are one, two, three, four, five broken solder points on this cable. There's that, that via right in the middle where my thumb is. There's three that are just like totally cut off and missing right where my thumb is now. And then one of these ones is also ripped off and broken. Um, and I, I, I looked it up because I was trying to find as much documentation as I could for this thing before I dove in. I'm going to use a different screwdriver because that one's all covered in flux. Um, there really isn't a lot of documentation on this specific one. I'm guessing this is an older design that they've changed somewhat uh, because all of their current designs also use a um, ribbon that solders onto the Game Boy. But instead of this white ribbon, they have a um, like a regular yellowy orange polyamide ribbon. Uh, but that ribbon also plugs into a flat flex connector on this uh, adapter board here, whereas this one gets soldered to it. So let's unplug that, mayhaps. Helps if I flip the bail up, huh? Alright, and I'll set that aside, come back to it. I have, well yeah, I guess it is an early design because it's unit number 16. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, luckily, everything seems to be labeled, so my plan of attack here is just to detach this ribbon and then just hand wire this thing in. Um, another ribbon would be nice, sure, but... I could also fix it now with what I have, and so I think I will, uh, I think I'll do that. And like obviously this ribbon was designed custom for this board, but this board, this specific iteration what apparently was not designed for a uh, ribbon. You know what? Let's pull this out of the casing too, just in case. I'm going to be doing a lot of soldering. It'd be a shame to melt the uh, 3D print. So I'm working off of two assumptions here. The first is that this ribbon is the only thing that's damaged and that this Game Boy Color and this adapter board will work when I throw everything together. Uh, if not, that's going to make things a little bit more difficult, but we'll get there in the end. Oh, that is two parts. I was wondering how they did that. So that would be an interesting thing to try and print in one piece. Uh, I don't see anything awry with the Game Boy Color side of things, so we're probably good. Uh, the biggest problem is that this ribbon cable was not fully inserted, and um, the bail wasn't actually closed on both sides, so maybe that's why they took it apart in the first place, but who knows? That is a tough joint. All right, and so unfortunately, I see one of the issues already can work around it, but I can see why this, the uh, seller was having problems. So this kit uses this ribbon to attach to all these points here. We have the volume, uh, both audio channels left and right. We have a ground right there. We have this reset pin that was taped over. I don't know what's up with that. Um, and then we have 
up, down, left, right, start, select, A and B. Not necessarily in that order. I don't know which is which. Uh, but unfortunately, one, two, I think maybe just these two have their pads ripped off. Uh, but they also just go up here, so I can use these pads up here without a problem. Uh, but unfortunately it means even if I got a replacement ribbon, I'd have to run some bodge wires anyway. So I think we're going to be all right. And I think... I think all three of those suck, so I'm just going to um, use different attachment points for all three of them. And that came off relatively painlessly, so I think we're going to be all right. Because I'm sure this will come up, but unfortunately I'm sure the people who are going to ask this aren't actually watching the video right now, um, at least this part, part of the video. Um, Gamebox does just straight sell these things. Like, you don't have to buy a kit. You can buy an assembled console. Like, what's... I, I was, uh... actually met Postman and Novel a, um, a week ago at this point. Really nice dudes, but I was chatting with them, and, and they were perplexed at the uh, current situation of the market for their their hardware. Uh, long story short, people are scalping their hardware and reselling them for more than the original hardware cost, and it's it's not out of stock. They're just <laughs> they're just being pushed for some reason. Um, I, I thought that was kind of weird, but at the same time, it does make a strange amount of sense. All right, so I need to find some alternate vias. And I might have to look up some documentation. I don't know which button is which. that's not going to work. Okay. Plan B. Get a little bit of IPA. Clean up all this flux. I suppose I could just go from there. It's probably worth not using those points, but I do have enough exposed to solder to. Alright, but now I can see I need that top one. I need that one right next to it. 
and then that top one. So I need for these three vias that are damaged, I need that one, that one, and that one. Should be easy enough. And luckily, there are Game Boy Color schematics available. So getting this information wouldn't be too difficult, if need be. Getting these things tinned the first time is always a pain in the butt, though. I think most people end up rec recommending like you scratch the uh, solder mask off from the front first. I've had success just putting a ball of solder on there, though. Of course, it doesn't seem to be working now. Go figure! There we go. Got two of them. And get the third. And I got the third. So now I need to come back with some wire. And my thought process is I'm going to use this ribbon cable to connect everything up. I'm just gonna cut a nice long piece and, and uh, trim it trim it as I go. We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen wires. Ah, that was close, I guess twelve. But that's easy enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and I'm going to do 15 just in case. I can always remove the extra wire. But if I give myself 15 to start with, I can keep it nice and clean. Separate three off. Oh, no, I'm going to separate four off. Start with these two here. I 
This is going to be a long video. Tedious wiring. Uh, I am probably going to pause in a few minutes and just do all of this wiring off screen. Um, for two reasons. One, because I'm getting anxiety just sitting here thinking about it. But two, my phone memory is nearly full and I will have to pause and clean it out at some point. I did not plan ahead as well as I should have. bit of tape and get that squished down right there. We can do some nice clean wiring that way. It's going to be a pain in the butt to figure this out on the other end, but like I said, well, I'm probably going to do that off screen. I'm going to clean that first. Now I can come back and leave this wire, attach that up to reset, and we don't have to use it, but it's there for a reason, at least on the ribbon cable. did I lose my flush cutters again? It's just like that stream. There it is. That's it. And I'm just gonna keep doing that until I get this whole thing wired up. I will, uh, I'll be back when I have some progress to report. Alright, so I've got all of the wiring done, uh, at least done to my satisfaction. Uh, next step is gonna be wiring this into the um, GBHD color board 
and uh, I was thinking about hardwiring it the same way this ribbon is supposed to be connected, but I think I had a better idea. I'm going to use header pins and just solder those in, and then I can put headers in there, and uh, I know I'm going to be in and out of this thing, so I might as well make it easy enough to, uh, to take apart. Uh, I don't have the right size header pins, but I think I'll be able to make this work no problem. It's just going to be a matter of clearing out the solder in these holes. Hopefully everything fits. I mean, I don't think it's going to be a huge issue, but... I haven't exactly done a test fit yet. last one is a ground and it's giving me trouble. Move on. That one's also a ground. Man, I'm just not having any luck with these. I guess let me crank the heat up. Oh, there's a hole I missed over here too. There we go, got it that time. And yeah, that one's gonna be a pain in the butt, isn't it? There we go. All 
All right, I got all of them. And while we're in here, I don't know what's going on, but the solder joints on this component look really suspicious. So I'm gonna fix that while I'm in here. that up with some fresh flux. Yeah, I don't know if that was like a mod or something, but that was real weird. All cleaned up now, though. Not the best way to burn off flux, but oh well. Anyway, everything else looks pretty good. Aside from the holes I just cleared out, those things look terrible. But the idea is we'll take this. Cut this to size and hope for the best. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm not even paying attention. These aren't the right size headers. Whoops. That explains a lot. I thought they looked small. If only I had more. These ones are quite a bit taller, though. Make sure everything actually still fits. That in there. pins on top of that. Do I actually have enough room? I don't think I do. Yep. Don't have enough room with those tall ones. Well, shoot. That was the plan, but I need to figure something else out. It's a shame those low profile ones don't fit. Oh well, I'll figure something else out. I'll finish up this wiring and uh, I'll be back. At least now we know those won't fit. All right. Alright, I think I'm finally there. So I was gonna hardwire it and then I ended up finding some uh, two and a half millimeter uh, pin sockets that are actually low profile and not those high profile ones I did earlier. And then I used some uh, angle headers and well, this is, this is what I ended up with. Um, there is one extra wire because that reset wire is not used, it appears. Um, but otherwise, we should be good to go. So try reassembling this, and if all went well, then uh, have a working gubahadu. Gubahadu color. All right. So as is tradition, I got all of the screws mixed up. So hopefully I remember what goes where. So even though there are uh, 14 solder points to connect to, 
or is it 13? I already forgot. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There are 13. I used 15 wires instead of 13. The reason I used 15 wires is because this, uh, this ribbon cable that I'm using is an 80 pin IDE cable and those are really thin gauge. And so I used one extra for ground, that's this loose wire here. Um, we have ground wired up for power and for audio, even though they should be the same ground. And um, then I used two for the uh, voltage wire that is actually underneath this fold here. But, I don't know. Seemed like a good idea at the time. So there are definitely other ways we could have done this, but this, I don't know, this seemed like the easiest and the cleanest method at the time. Uh, I may have been mistaken on that, but we'll hope for the best. I'm pretty sure these are the right screws. That doesn't seem like the right screw. It's not. That's the right screw. I'm trying to be careful of my wiring because I'm not very uh, confident in those uh, very thin gauge wires holding up to uh, repeated flexing, so in hindsight wasn't the best material to use, but here we are, so <laughs> I mean at least it kind of hinges open. Make sure that's still in all the way, feels like it. Inserted, mayhaps. There we go. And if all goes well, it should just screw back together. There are these two, I think. I hope that's the right screw. Just to do the hinge, yep. Still feels sufficiently hingy. And Doesn't feel like it went in right. Of course, my screwdriver is not long enough, anyhow. And that doesn't feel like the right size, but oh well, close enough. Let's try it out, shall we? No, before doing that, ah, uh, 
issue. I hope the Game Boy is still switched off. I didn't check that. Hmm. I like to use the correct size screwdriver. Is that? Oh, that's way better. And the Game Boy is still switched off, so that was pointless, but peace of mind, so be it. This is not a great screwdriver. Alright, well, whatever. I'll worry about the screws after. Hopefully, I'll worry about the screws after. Ooh, that is nice. I like how that fits in. Interesting, the uh, casing, though. There's these little ridges that go up, and to insert the cart all the way, we have to kind of flex the casing. But it's not terrible, but it could be better. Then again, I shouldn't be too critical because this is an older style kit. I know they have changed the design since then, uh, and they don't even sell this specific design anyhow, so. Uh, let's get that to see. That looks like micro USB. Capture in. And controller. And I have no idea how to start this thing. You know what? I have no idea what it was, but I unplugged it and plugged it back in. Uh, obviously I took the game out, but I unplugged it, plugged it back in, and now suddenly it's working. Uh, so if we hold start and select, it should bring us into the uh, OSD here. It was like five seconds or something. Mayhaps. There it goes. And, uh, info. So I don't know how old this is or if there are even any updates available or anything but it's working firmware v 1.11 there's, there's my credits instead of 720p uh, I think we will use the uh, proper scaling over scan I don't I think we care about any of that nonsense. New border color, sure. That's neat. I like that color. I don't know what this lit kit option is supposed to do. Uh, I'm not gonna mess with remap or any of that stuff, but we can power the Game Boy off. Slip that game in. Power back on, and shut up. I don't have any audio. I don't think it's related to that. I think I might just not be capturing. Oh wait, no, I have my computer muted. That's why I wouldn't have audio. Uh, oh, I just powered the Game Boy off. I think I hear audio. I hope it's capturing. Oh yeah, it's just very quiet. Well, hopefully it's in the capture, I guess.
But hey, look at that. It's working. It's working. I have up, down, well, left, up, right, down, start, select, and then I don't know what L and R are supposed to be mapped to if they're mapped to anything. Uh, there aren't any L and R buttons on the original Game Boy Color, so not doing anything here. Same with X and Y, but we can go into the OSD again. And I'm guessing, ah. Oh. I like the power in the menu. I'm just not used to it. And I keep turning the Jesus thing off. Oh, and that remaps it in the menu too. Okay, so you can change the remap options to be a little bit more Super Nintendo-like. So Y is now B and B is now A. And then I'm guessing these two are turbo? Mayhap? Either way, I dig it. I'm into it. That's pretty sweet. All right, I'm gonna say this now, and uh, hopefully I don't have to uh, <laughs> go back on it. Um, it sounds fine. I hope it's capturing. It's a little on the quiet side, but that could just be my audio settings on my end. Let's use the flash card, why don't we? The other flash card. The one that was in my Game Boy, but isn't now for some reason. Okay, fine. Let's use this brand new cart that I picked up at a uh, convention. That doesn't actually fit, never mind. <laughs> uh, so I remember those chamfers I was talking about. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It should run anything that a Game Boy Color can run. Um, obviously, it's got to physically fit, but I don't know. I don't know what to try. I guess I'll try this Easy Flash. I didn't want to try this one because I don't know what games are even on here, if there are any. I guess we can run Pokemon Silver again. I don't know that any of those ROM hacks actually work. I haven't tried them before. But I suppose as long as it boots Pokemon Silver, it doesn't matter. Well, that's interesting. Oh, there it goes. It was just taking its time. There we go. I don't have a save on this thing. Um, it's also a little bit awkward to have to use the button on the uh, Game Boy itself, but that's how flash cards work. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter for the easy flash, but for something like an EverDrive, using that button is uh, somewhat inconvenient, but hey, it is what it is. I think that's about all I've got. Let me try this thing, see if that works. I don't see why it shouldn't. Ah, oh, of course the save file is corrupted. 
I have uh, reflashed this cart so many times, I don't even know what save is actually on here. But clearly it's not a crystal clear save. And it doesn't matter because this is out of date. So I need to update this flashcard anyhow. They're on like 2.52 now or something. But yeah, this is this is pretty neat. I'm digging it. Um, about the only thing I have left to do is I need to get these screws in. But quite frankly, I'm probably just going to find something else that's not these Phillips because I don't like not being able to use my good screwdriver because of who I am as a person. Uh, it'd also be kind of neat to test this thing out with um, some like 8-bit do controllers or 8-bit do. I don't know what it's supposed to be. But I don't have any. All I have are actual regular Super Famicom and uh, Super Nintendo controllers. Which should be the same aside from the fact that Super Nintendo controllers have a much, much bigger cord on them. But, uh, I don't know. It works. I'm digging it. It's pretty good. I don't, I don't know that I'll, uh, I'll actually play this thing. Probably not, but I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna give it an honest try. And uh, you know, if I need to pull it apart, I have these detachable headers in here. I can uh, well, it's still on technically, so I'm gonna not mess with that. <laughs> but yeah, it's all right. I'm I'm eager to see what else they uh, what else they do. Gamebox has been uh, been killing it with some of the the stuff they've been putting out, so. I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm just stoked, man. This thing is so cool. I love the form factor. I, I, I it's pretty neat. I'm I'm fanboying super hard right now. Um Yeah, I'm 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 stoked I got it working too. Uh it performs pretty much as I'd expect. Uh there I tried looking it up and there's like one video on YouTube about the GBHD color. Um, all the other videos seem to be for the original DMG version, which doesn't support color games like Pokemon Crystal or uh, Shock Slayer's Crystal Clear. Um, this does. They've also got the uh, GBHD Advance, which is pretty similar. You know, it's exactly what it sounds like. This is the GBHD Color because you use the Game Boy Color. And they have the GBHD Advance, which uses a Game Boy Advance. So, you know, if you're looking for that um, all-in-one consoleizer solution, I suppose it would make more sense to look at the Game Boy Advance version, because the Game Boy Advance version will run Game Boy Color games too, uh, whereas this one will only run original Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. Um, I don't know why this cart slot is so dirty, and I don't even know if it came like that. I think that's something I did. It looks like flux all over it. But, uh... Huh? Came out pretty good. So, yeah, I think, I think that's all I've got. I think I've got to, um... Leave it off here. Um, if I keep going, I'll, I'll ramble all night about stuff that's not even relevant. But... It's super cool. If you have a uh, link cable game, should still work. We've got our link port accessible right there. Uh, except that I can't seem to plug anything into this. But, oh, there it goes. It was just a link port problem. Um, I have no idea what this volume wheel is supposed to do because it should be pulling audio uh, before the volume wheel, but I don't remember what the LN and RN pads connect to directly. I'd have to pull up the schematic. Uh, and it does have IR function. Uh, there are little holes in the case for the IR LEDs if you want to do like Mystery Gift and Pokemon. That does work, so it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat! Well, there we go. I'll, um... Yeah, I don't know. I guess I'll go actually play this thing now, see what's up. And uh, I'll 
populate the description with links for all this sort of stuff if you want to check them out. Um, I do highly recommend them. I, I met both, both Postman and Novel in person when I was at uh, Midwest Gaming Classic a few weeks ago. Um, both super nice dudes, super passionate about what they're doing, and I, I just, I love it. I, I love shooting the shit with people like that, and that's interesting. It reset when I pulled that out, but I'm unplugging it anyhow, so it doesn't matter. Um, super passionate dudes. They're, they're really into what they're doing, and, like, it just, it, it got me excited to mess with this thing just talking with them. Um, they didn't convince me to buy this. I, I stumbled across it all on my own and decided to make poor decisions, but hey, that, I, I can't fault that seller. I mean, they, they were honest. It was fine aside from the thing that they broke. So I wonder why they even opened it in the first place, but it is what it is, and um, I guess if I never have to open it again, I'm not going to worry about those screws, and I guess I'll leave it as is. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like there's a little bit of cracking with my case. Uh, maybe, maybe the previous owner didn't treat it too nicely. Well, I already know they didn't because the fact that I got it so cheap. Uh, but anyway, that's all I got. Uh, if they game box linked in the description if you want to check out they have quite a few other things um, they sell kits for this stuff but it's the full size one not the half size one uh, they also sell pre-assembled consoleizers it's surprisingly good deal if that's what you're into I I personally am a fan of the DIY stuff but that's because that's what the hobby is to me I like I like assembling that sort of stuff. If the hobby to you is just playing these things, then, you know, grab a pre-assembled one and go to go nuts, you know? It'll be great. I just, that fit is really good. I'm just, I'm, I'm impressed with that. I haven't had that kind of fitment with my 3D prints. All right, that's all I got. I'll catch you all next time. If you stuck with me for this whole video, thank you. If not, well, that's fine too. And uh, check the description for more links, and I'll catch you all next time.